Alleluia. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> this is the Hot Man a Minute YouTube channel. I got a spiritual warfare teaching tonight. Okay? And I think this is it's a it's a very simple revelation. A lot of you guys know this. Praise God. Some of you guys don't. I've talked about this in the past. So let's really I've never done a video though to really break this down for understanding through the so let's just do it, man. And and this is what I want to say. And this is where we're going to start, guys. We don't war in the flesh on anything, okay? Jesus says if if somebody hits you, you're supposed to turn the other cheek, right? Jesus says that you're to love your enemies, that you're to pray for those that persecute you, okay? Bless those that curse you, okay? So check this out because... We got Christians thinking our battles in the flesh that we're to take up arms and action. Look, this world is going to burn. The, every part of this world is going to burn. Every worldly system implemented by man is going to burn. You are not, we do not war in the flesh. What does the Bible say? 2 Corinthians 10, let's read verse 4 if I can click on it. There we go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. They're not fleshly, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, right? Everybody should know this next scripture. If you don't, there's something wrong, okay? You need to know this. Ephesians 6, we're going to go right to 12, right to the meat. What do we got? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So, what is the point of this teaching? I want to explain something to you. That there needs to be a connection. Pray about this. Take this to the Lord. Okay? And I'm just going to the only way I know how to do this to break it down, I'm going to tell you how the Lord taught me. Okay? I was handing out Bibles a few years ago in front of a dollar uh, general and praying for people and just being led of the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? And this dude rolled up and man, he I knew right away he was a Satanist. Like his van was covered in trash on the inside. He had like chains on the dashboard. He had a, a death metal band t-shirt on that I was familiar with because I used to be involved in that, the death metal. And um, so anyways, this dude rolls up and um, I was like, hey, what's up, man? God bless you. Jesus Christ loves you. And you want a free Bible, man? And this guy just screams in my face at the top of his lungs. He, he says, hail Satan to me at the top of his lungs in my face. And I freaked out, man. I totally freaked out. I started rebuking this guy. I, I was like, I started like, I was like, oh, I curse you in the name of the Lord saying all this stuff to this guy. You know what I mean? And in the middle of it, like he was yelling at me and I'm yelling curses and all this stuff at him. And in the middle of it, he just walks in the store. And I'm, I'm like pumping. I'm like pumped, man. And right there, man, the Holy Spirit checked me. Right in that moment, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me. And the Lord cut me to the heart. And I felt immediate conviction for what I'd done. But I did not know why. And, and what I'm trying to teach you tonight is why. Because this is how the Lord is. He showed me in that second. He told me first to go in. And there's a scripture we always talk about in Proverbs. It says, um, commit your works to the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. The Lord told me to go give that man $5. I was like, Lord, are you serious? And he was like, do it. So I went in the dollar general and that, and that guy I walked up on that guy. And obviously like he, he clinched up because he thought I'd come back for more. And I said, look, man, I'm really sorry. And I gave him $5. I said, I'm really sorry. You know, Jesus Christ still loves you, bro. And I thought he was going to rip the money up and I would have given him more money. But I think, you know, all I had was five bucks. And that was what the Lord's put on my heart. But, um, at that moment, like I just sort of turned around and walked away. But like, I sort of looked back and I think the dude was crying and I don't know, man, but then the Holy Spirit come on me and he gave me the understanding finally. And this is what it is guys. And this is what Christians are failing to realize in this hour. Okay. You have a soul which is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions, all right? And and you have a body, okay? You're, you're a three-part bearing. You're a spirit, soul, and body, okay? There's demonic spirits on people that are like Satanists and witches and a lot of people that have a lot of demons, okay? But it's not that person that's doing it. It's the demon inside of them. 
if that makes sense. It's like, remember when you were a kid and you used to watch uh, sock puppet shows, right? So like the person is like the sock. That sock can't control the, the hand inside that's making its mouth move, right? And it should be the Holy Spirit, but sometimes it's not. So that's the person's soul, their mind, their will and emotions, okay? Has a spirit ruling over it that's not of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now check this next verse out and I pray that you, <laughs> you catch where I'm going with this because this is the spiritual warfare tactic, all right? Hebrews 4.12 and it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit. Now most people take that like in the Lord, but listen, the soul and the spirit, the word of God divides the person's soul and a spirit. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit. It could be any spirit. And there's seven levels of revelation to every scripture in this book. So one of those levels of revelation that you can apply this in spiritual warfare, say a witch or somebody comes up to you and they're speaking curses and utterances and everything else, right? You can use this scripture right here and pray it out loud. Say, according to Hebrews 4.12, I take the sword of the spirit and I separate your soul from this wicked demon causing you to talk like this in Jesus mighty name and watch them. They'll start manifesting right there and then you could cast the thing out of them come out in jesus name you know what i'm saying so so it's not that person it's the spirit ruling over them right they need to repent for whatever the doors they opened that brought that spirit in to begin with right and i pray you're understanding this man i pray you are if you have any questions leave them in the comments but use the sword of the spirit to separate people's souls from demonic spirits in this hour man there's a spirit of confusion going around say you got a loved one right now who's taking the v-e-e-e -E -E, right and they got this confusing spirit because they're watching the news all the time they're believing the sorcery they're eating the spell up that's been putting over the mass populace right now you can pray in the prayer closet for that loved one and say, you know, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, because God loves it when you give his angels charge over his word and prayer, amen. You can pray that according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, I take the sword of the spirit and I separate so-and-so's soul from the spirit of confusion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You have the authority in Jesus, guys, to be doing this. A lot of us aren't because we don't have the understanding, amen. So pray about it and remember, commit your works unto the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. Sometimes God wants you to step out and do something and after you do it, then the understanding comes upon you and everything makes sense. Amen. So I pray this is a blessing. Use this in your arsenal of spiritual warfare and I pray y'all blessed. Um, please keep us in prayer. We are blessed, man. The Lord Jesus Christ has made a provision for us to go back out on the road full time we're gonna be coming up the east coast i got my birthday coming up next week and we are literally going back on the road right after my birthday and we're gonna keep staying on the road until they be shutting them uh roads down until you got proof of the you know what so <laughs> that's our goal right now we love you guys and um uh god willing i'll see you on the next one bye